Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to react to DMX albums ranked worst to worst to best. Shout out to uh, Culturalist Theory. They put out new episodes every Tuesday. Go check them out. Let's get them up to silver status, man. They should have a silver plaque by now, man. They shouldn't be at the lowest subscriber count that they at, man. They they putting in the work, man. They putting in the work. Y'all need to go over there and subscribe to them, man. Shout out to uh, Culturalist Theory. Let's get right into it, though. Hey, Williams for Culturalist Theory. And for this video, we're revisiting the late great DMX's catalog, ranking his albums from worst to first. Note, this list will not include the compilations or mixtapes from the dog, only his eight studio albums. And stay tuned for the end of the video where you can find out how to win this official DMX tour hoodie from his very last tour, all right? In the meantime, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss a list. Number eight, Undisputed. X's seventh album was the first with no Rough Rider affiliation and the lack of their presence is felt. When they six years after the previous Year of the Dog Again album, the better than you remember Undisputed does have highlights worth checking out. Cold World, I Get Scared, and I'm Back are solid joints with above average replay value. X handles most of the heavy lifting solo as a seemingly random MGK verse and female MC Cashmere are the only rap features on the album. Yeah, it was pretty... <clears throat> this one was a little lackluster, especially this. I think this is when he first got out too. This is when he started doing all the Breakfast Club interviews, talking about Drake and J Cole and all. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! X was keeping it real though. X was just keeping it real, bro. You can't knock him though. R. P. To X, man. Due to the lack of familiar Rough Rider voices and production, the album lacks the grit and nostalgia that his earlier works have. But still, not as bad as you think. Number seven, Year of the Dog again. Released August of 06, Year of the Dog marks the first time a DMX album did not land at number one on the Billboard charts, breaking a five album streak by X. The out? Yep. This is all Jay Z fault. Jay Z's a fucking hater, bro. This is why I don't like Jay Z. <laughs> I, ne I never liked Jay Z. I still to this day don't like Jay Z. Jay Z is one of the most overrated artists of all time. He's a piece of shit. In my eyes, in my eyes Jay Z is a piece of shit. I don't like him. I think he's a piece of shit. Uh, X is better than him by a mile. Nas is better than him by a mile. Uh, <sighs> yeah, Jay-Z is a piece of shit for this, bro. Because X had an album already ready to go. You the president of Def Jam, and you fuck this man over, telling him that that single not good enough. This album's not good enough. Make another one. This one ain't hitting. Eliminated the competition. He eliminated the competition, and that's how Def Jam actually got worse. Def Jam was all good. It had all the artists and everything. And then it took a tone turn for the worse when he took over. Because he eliminated all the competition. And this is the product. And, and they had to go elsewhere to do the finished up their products. And this is the, the final result of him. This is a prime example of, of the results. And the only person he couldn't get to was Nas. Nas was the only one that survived out of that. Nas was the only one that survived out of that with that Hip Hop Is Dead album. He was the only one that survived. Who had semi-strong singles with We In Here and Lord Give Me A Sign, but they just didn't hit quite the same as previous bangers. The album starts off on the right foot with quality joints like It's Personal and Dog Love, and closes strong with Blown Away and Goodbye. It's the middle of the album where Ed stumbles with rock and roll influence Mrs. Wrong or Right and Walk These Dogs. A step back lyrically, the album generally was looked at as X's first real miss. Number six, The Great Depression. X's fourth album, The Great Depression, was met with mixed reviews and was considered somewhat of a letdown from the stellar and then there was X album that preceded it. Led by the underrated We Right Here, the single failed to reach Billboard Top 100 and the follow-up Who We Be, also solid, only made it to number 43. Women coming from an artist of DMX's stature. One reason the album wasn't received as well as the previous was the lack of a real Rough Rider presence. With the exception of a hidden drag on verse on the last track, there are no features from Running Mate's Eve, 
Jada Kiss, or any other member of the locks. Similar to Undisputed, the lack of voices is glaring as the music doesn't connect the same without the normal cohesion and sound we're accustomed to. While records like I Miss You and When I'm Nothing are solid, there's just too many mediocre joints like Number 11 and Bloodline Anthem that weigh the album down. Number 5, Exodus. Released a little over a month after his passing, Exodus was a well put together posthumous yeah. album from DMX. Ex they, 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 did, they, they did justice. They did justice on this album. This was a really good album bro if y'all haven't if y'all haven't checked this album out bro y'all should definitely go listen to it bro this is they did they did x justice on this one bro this was a really good album Making it produced by longtime friend and collaborator Swiss Beats, his fingerprints are felt throughout. Starting with features, for example, hearing X back with the locks was a welcome sight, and collabs with Nas, Jay, Usher, Alicia Keys, and even Snoop Dogg are all well placed. Critically acclaimed but commercially slept on, X's star had diminished over the years, causing many people to skip this album. Unfortunately for them, they missed out on powerful joints like Walking in the Rain and Letter to My Son, as well as bangers like Hood Blues and Bath Song. The latter was nominated for a Grammy for Best Rap Song. Exodus left many day one X fans satisfied knowing he could rest easy with a quality album to celebrate his legacy. Number right. four, Grand Champ. The fifth album mm. from X came at a time when the dog was contemplating leaving music. Now, now what about rumors that this is possibly your last album? This is my last album. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Why, and you're positive that? about that. As rap artists, as any type of musicians, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? We pay for our, our recording to be done. We pay for our promotion to be done. We pay for everything. And we still don't get an even split from the record company. Not only was he bumping heads with his record label, Ruff, That's and true. Over, what else? Money concerns. But his film career had also taken off. At this point, he had four successful films under his belt, yep. including the cult classic Belly and action flicks like Romeo Must Die and Cradle to the Grave. With X looking to leave music behind, he delivered a strong project that was a nice bounce back from the underwhelming Great Depression that dropped two years prior. X feels right at home with anthems like Where the Hood At and Get It on the Floor, and with reflective joints like My Life and The Rain. X pulled out all the stops when it came to production and features too. Swiss, No ID, Rock Rider, and a young Kanye West had beats on the album. With Jada Kiss, Eve, Cameron, and 50 Cent co-starring, Grand Champ will go down as one of X's most underrated albums. Special shout out to the Monica featured side chick sing-along Don't Gotta Go Home. Did you know there's another version of the record on Monica's After the Storm album? It's almost identical minus the beat switch that's featured on X's version. Let me know which one you prefer best in the comments. Number mm. three, and then there was X. Expectations for the third album from DMX was sky high. He had just come off dropping two number one albums in one year, a yep. feat only one other hip hop artist had done. More on that in a moment. So when, and then there was X dropped the following year, fans were anxiously awaiting the release. That's evident by the 698,000 copies it sold first week. Lucky for them, the album is one of his best. Standouts like... Yeah, the, I, I would argue that this should be number one. I would argue that. I would honestly argue this being number one. But the first two albums, the first two, it's tough, bro. It's tough. But this, he, bro, he came back with some bangers on this one, bro. That's why I say it's, it's tough, bro. Because the first three albums are, it's not, it's not. It's not easy to rank them three, bro, because one got bangers, one just one just hit you here, and the other one is just like it's just raw, it's it's gritty, it's rough, but it's good though. That's bro, X made some good ass music, bro. The first three albums, bro. This one right here had the bangers. The, the 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 second one, um, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, that one hits you right here, and then uh, uh, darkest, uh, uh, the first album, I forget, I forget the name of it. I don't know how I keep forgetting the name of it. But the first album, nigga, that fucking intro, boom boom, uh oh. Boom boom. You done done it now. Doom doom. That motherfucker, bro. That's bro, that motherfucker was just 
that motherfucker was just good, bro. That was just a good ass album, bro. It's tough, bro. It's tough to debate in them three albums, bro. It's tough, bro. It is tough because the third one had bangers on it for days. But the 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 the, the first two just they just hit differently, bro. I, I, I don't know how to explain it, bro. X's first three albums are all, they're all different. They're not identical. They're all all three of them are different. One one just make you feel like one just make you feel like a dog. One one hit you right here and make you start thinking about shit, questioning shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, questioning your morals as a person. You know, you know all the good you done done, all the bad you done done. Has it really worth? Is it really worth it all? Is sometimes and then one album you just you you can't press the skip button on. It's just fire, bro. One more road to cross. Here we go again. It's tough. I would, I would, I would debate. I would debate this as a, as, as, as a number one. I would debate this. Yeah, they had, it, but these bitches won't from a nigga. album of his career. Speaking of singles, anybody else think the Cisco solo at the end of the What They Want video should have also been on the album version? Facts. Let me know in the comments. Facts. Two, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Yeah. Well, at least just seven months after his debut, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood is yeah. the album that catapulted DMX into superstar status. Yeah. Sixteen tracks deep, the album is filled with high octane gas. Bangers like Heat, We Don't Give a F and Ain't No Way mesh perfectly with deep cuts like Coming From and the classic Slipping. X was tough. Yeah, slipping, fuck, I, I can't get up. And y'all slipping, fuck, I can't get up. And y'all slipping, fuck, got to get up. Back to back number one albums in less than a year, the first being the late Tupac Shakur. The album would eventually surpass Triple Platinum and cement X's place at the top of rap royalty. Before I get to the number one DMX album, let me tell you how you can go about winning this DMX It's Dark and Hell is Hot tour hoodie. All you gotta do, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram at Culturalist Theory, and leave a comment on this video with your favorite X album and IG ham. Go subscribe to these boys, man. Not for the hoodie, though. I'm pretty sure the hoodie has been given off. This came out some time ago so this video is pretty old but go subscribe to them boys just because you need to man well, that way we know where to find you on april 19th we'll choose a random winner from these comments on instagram good luck number one it's dark and hell is hot at a time when shiny suits yeah. west coast gangsters and down south hustlers ran rap dmx knocked the doors off of hip-hop's hinges with his debut it's dark and hell is hot led by the greedy get at me dog x was a side of new york hip-hop many hadn't seen yet the 27 year old yonkers mc's delivery was aggressive on joints like stop being greedy ATF and X is coming. But it was a commercial hit Rough Riders anthem produced by then rookie Swiss Beats that made the biggest splash. The bouncy banger could get play in any Jeep from New York to Cali and show X had Bro, when that song came out, that song had a three year that song had a three year hood pass, bro. There are those songs that Niggas just can't stop playing. If you live in the hood, then you know. But them, it's them songs that, that be playing, and they play for three, and they play for periods of time. Rough Riders Anthem had a three-year period, bro, in the hood. Niggas would not stop bumping that fucking song, bro, until the third album came out. When the third album came out... We, they finally laid that song to rest because X put some more heat out. But motherfucking stop, drop, shut them down on an up shop. Oh, oh, that's a rough riders roll. Niggas wanna try what? <laughs> Nigga, that shit would not stop bumping, bro. That shit had a three year pass in the hood, bro. You couldn't go nowhere without hearing that shit. And the fucked up part about it is, you wasn't even mad about it, bro. Because you was singing it. Every time you heard that. Stop. Drop. Shut them down. Open up a shop. Oh. No. That's a rough riders roll. Come on, man. Three years, bro. <laughs> Three years.
That song had a three-year hood pass, bro. Would not stop playing that song to the next album, to the third album came out, bro. Nationwide superstar potential. Considered by many a classic, it's Dark and Hell is Hot is one of the best hip-hop debut albums of all time. Facts. That's it for today's list. Don't forget to enter the contest. Just leave a comment, put your ad name, follow us on Instagram. And I, it's, it's, it's really up in the air for them first three albums, bro. The first three albums by X, hands down. Bro, and either one of them could be number one, really. All three of them albums can be number one. But if I had to choose, I got to go with this Dark and Hell is Hot. I got to put that one at number one. Just because of the Rough Rider F him alone. <laughs> the Rough Rider F him alone is just, it, it, bro, it's just something about it. When that song come on... You just don't get tired of it, bro. You could listen to that song 500 times. You just never get tired of it. Just boom, 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 you know, hopefully, hopefully they keep his legacy alive. Hopefully they don't go down the, the route of, oh, we gonna support him for right now, but in a couple of years we gonna call him a drug user and a drug addict. And I, no, don't do that. He was a man. He was a father. He was a great artist. Why do we always do that? Why do we always tear? And it's always with the black people, bro. Black people, we tear down. We don't never do that with the white people unless they deserved it. X didn't deserve to be tear don't deserve to be teared down. Just like Kobe Bryant don't deserve to be teared down. Just like Michael Jackson don't deserve to be teared down. Just like Nipsey Hussle don't deserve to be teared down. Just like uh Takeoff don't deserve to be teared down. Nobody deserves to be teared down, bro. Unless they did something that complete bro, unless they they did some shit that was foul to the point where we got to tear their ass down, then fine. But X didn't do nothing wrong, bro. Went to jail a couple of times. Who doesn't? Had a drug problem. There's plenty of people out here with drug problems. It's people on Wall Street with drug problems. So... Let's not tear this man down. Let's let's share this man's legacy for what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? He made great music. He's a great artist, great actor. In my personal opinion, he's I, in my personal opinion, I would say he's the closest thing we ever got to a to a Tupac. To a, to a, to a, he he's a remixed version of Tupac. That's what I say. But anyways, though, we're just gonna leave it right there for right now. Tell me what y'all think down below in the comment section. Which Three of them albums do you think should have been number one? Like I said, it's dark and hell is hot. That's my ultimate number one. But the other two albums, they have an argument as well, bro. But let me know what y'all think down below in the comment section below. I'll get back to you till then. Peace out.